All right, we got some late breaking news. So if you guys haven't heard, well, you will. The PlayStation 3 emulator, RPCS3, has now been compatible for ARM devices. That includes your Raspberry Pi 5. There's been a few showcases on it. I'm gonna go over all the details in this video, as well as the exciting new updates that we're currently working on. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so the team over at RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, apparently that is the only official emulator for PlayStation 3 games, is now fully compatible with Linux and ARM-based devices. Now, obviously, it would work with Linux x86, but the key breakthrough is that they showed some videos the other day of it running on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now, in order to accomplish this, and uh, we're going to go over some of the details in terms of all the uh, information. You know, the ironic thing is, I was talking to some other guys with the Supreme Team, and I was like, hey, let's go ahead and compile PlayStation 3 uh for the raspberry pi 5 just wanted to see if i could tweak anything to see if any of the games would run and they said no it won't even install well lo and behold a few days later somebody must have been reading my email it is now virtually compatible with the raspberry pi 5 now according to their review in the videos that they were posted they overclocked the unit to about 2900 megahertz on the g on the cpu and 1000 megahertz on the gpu now uh, you guys know i've always talked about overclocking isn't really necessary but this may be one of those particular cases because of the power requirements and video requirements of the raspberry pi 3 i'm sorry of the raspberry pi 5 and running playstation 3 emulation but uh here's a few video shots of uh some of their testing and vulcan rendering they were able to accomplish now apparently uh based upon the things that they were able to accomplish or run on this not every game is going to run at full speed as you can see here you got a draw time of 19.75 fps uh, while they were trying to do some rendering and compiling um, i'm not sure why they were using the llm vm uh, video adapter on here you have two of them which is uh, you have your vulcan and then you also have your pipeline uh, on the Raspberry Pi 5. And so this isn't something that I even use when I'm running Dolphin or any of the PlayStation 2 emulation. I'm running either OpenGL or actually just Vulkan primarily, but you never really wanna use this, but I, I don't know, maybe they were just running some tests uh, for their ARM-based compatibility. But uh, you can see here, they say it's changing the limits of the PlayStation 3 emulation. And so what they decided to do was run the resolution of the PSP emulation. So right now, I believe they're getting about uh, 272 pixels. I definitely believe uh, that they're, that's what's pretty much what they're getting. We also have a few more screenshots of they're getting uh, fame, frames per second, 82.77. Now this is with the Sega Sonic, uh, Sega Sonic game that they have running on here. So obviously that's not, that's a 2D based game. Uh, obviously that doesn't surprise me that a game of that type of magnitude will be able to run efficiently. I'm really interested to see how God of War 3 uh, really performs. And I saw some of the videos that they did have were some of the God of War 2 video games. So let's go ahead and take a look here. It says, unfortunately the Vulcan renderer would only work for a small of amount of time before hanging the entire system and requiring the device to power cycle this meant that we had to shift to testing the OpenGL renderer, which is pretty much what I've used for PlayStation 2, as well as some of the other demanding emulations on our RetroPie Raspberry Pi 5. Fortunately, the results were great, but with the Mesa V3D OpenGL for Broadcom GPUs being able to render all tested games correctly with no visual bugs. Now, the cool thing about the RCPS3 uh, I'm sorry, RPCS3 emulator is that they do have enough sufficient tweaks to kind of go in there just like the E3 emulator that you guys have seen here on the channel. You can get in there, tweak it, make some additional adjustments and see exactly how far we can push it. It says, however, initial results from testing dozens of games were not very promising. Games were displaying very low performance overall and no games seemed to run well, even simple ones. After some investigation, we realized the Broadcom video core uh v7 uh i'm sorry video core is seven gpu in the raspberry pi 5 is not only unbelievably weak but was also several times weaker than the playstation 3's own gpu so this is one of the things that i've always talked about and i told you guys the orange pi 5 
is a much better single board computer in terms of raw gaming performance. Uh, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the Orange Pi 5's GPU is somewhere clocked at around 900 megahertz and the Raspberry Pi 5's is clocked at somewhere about maybe 700, something like that. But honestly, this doesn't surprise me too much because I've taken a lower end x86 and gotten much better graphical uh, performance on a board that would register at 375 on Geekbench. And it kicked the crap in, uh, out of the Raspberry Pi 5 in terms of PlayStation 2 emulation. So uh, this is all true. This is factually true. So I'm not shocked by any of this. Uh, several times weaker than the Raspberry Pi 3's, uh, PlayStation 3's own GPU, the RSX. This means that the Raspberry Pi 5 is not capable of rendering these games at 720p. So it says here uh, they set a minimum config allowed resolution scale to 25%. Uh, keep in mind, this is something you guys have heard me preach here on this channel time and time again. You, you, you drop that resolution and you will instantly get, and for the most part, typically you'll always get better uh, emulation experience as a pair to try to overclock it, which typically doesn't even work. After testing with different rendering resolutions, we saw a great performance boost as the rendering resolution was lower as the bottleneck shifted away from the GPU back to the CPU. Unfortunately, even 360p rendering of these 3D games proved too much for this GPU. We then decided to settle on rendering games at the PlayStation Portable screen resolution of 272p by setting the resolution scale at 38%. Now, there's some additional adjustments that they could have made. I'll go ahead and make them myself. So, uh, so there's some additional improvements that we can make. I've even done it on PlayStation 2 where we could get these things uh, really uh, typed in. Uh, here we go. We see God of War 1 tested at both 720p. PS3 and 273p PSP resolutions running the game at its PS3 resolution at 720p. We can see that it struggles to render around 10 frames per second. And you know, my theory is, is this, it's like, even if you take the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One games, and let's say we drop them all down to 8-bit and 16-bit resolutions, they should be able to run perfectly fine. So most of the stuff that we're having problems with trying to run on some of these single board computers has to do with all the upscaling and the graphical interfaces and everything that they should run but worst case scenario at some form of resolution it should possibly work and that's always been my type of theory even with some of these playstation 2 games there's some additional settings in there uh the sky is still uh the limit now the main point of this video review uh, we have some additional pictures here we'll kind of qu quickly scroll through them the main point of this review is that even though they have this running on the Raspberry Pi 5, it's a different story to try to get this running or working on a gaming front end. As you guys have heard, there's been time and time again, well, there'll be many reviewers saying, hey, PS2 emulation will work. But then there've been issues where other gaming front ends, like let's say your recall box or uh, Batacera, you couldn't compile that emulator in their native environment. Now, nobody wants to game or do anything from desktop. Most of the time, the majority of the time, I, I held a poll on this. When people refer to emulation, they want to run this stuff. They want to run it from a gaming front end like Supreme Ultra or Recall Box or Batacera or CoinOps, uh, LaunchBox. But again, we're, we're kind of talking about, you know, Linux based. Uh, single board computers. They're not going to run from desktop. So even though they have this running from a desktop experience, uh, as of earlier today, it was not possible. I tested it myself. I tried to compile it. Some other members of the Supreme team tried to compile it and it ended up breaking the image. Now, now the cool thing is there's a plus and minus to this. The good thing is, is that we found some additional issues that we addressed uh, for the latest uh, Supreme Ultra 1.5. You guys have kind of seen me toying around with it a little bit. It hasn't been officially released. So uh, we, we're going to fix that, but I do have some good news for you. Lo and behold, we got it working. Uh, it took a few hours, but there you guys see it. There is the RPCS3 emulator for the first time being compiled here on Kiel Nike. So uh, as of right now, that all right, so my apologies. I forgot to turn down the sound on the <clears throat> Raspberry Pi when I was recording this portion of the video. 
But essentially what I was saying was, is that this is always a two part process, just because you can have an emulator run from a desktop environment that does not mean is automatically going to be compilable from a retro gaming front end, such as coin ops, Batisera, recall box, retro pie, and many other various ones out there. There's still some additional tests. And earlier today, when I tested it to try to get this installed, it actually broke Supreme ultra and as well, we found, we found a few other things, but essentially it's just not an easy process of just hey an emulator can run and now it works on arm or it works on a particular single board computer we want to get this into an actual retro gaming environment for you so you can enjoy it in the manner which is meant to be displayed also hopefully by this saturday maybe this weekend i can run some actual tests on here and we'll see exactly how this can perform as well as add some additional tweaks that you guys probably have not seen yet so uh, hopefully all of that will be able to get taken care of this week. I have a few things that I need to do, but that is pretty much the plan going forward. Go back to source, it out, all this. And I've been told that it only shows up in carbon. Let's go ahead and switch over to carbon. Let's do this. I'll come back with another review, but I'm just pleased to let you guys know that it is officially installed. The PlayStation 3 emulator is on Supreme Ultra. The first time this emulator is now on a mini front end for the arm based devices. And cross your fingers. We'll see if I can make it happen. Uh, see if I can get some additional speeds out of here. I have seen exactly some of their videos, but again, uh, that's from a desktop environment. We're going to see how it runs directly from a gaming environment because there's different changes uh, that we have here. We have, you know, you have your arcade, not your arcade, but you have your track mode scripts. We have Vulcan. We have different compilations of things that are on here specifically designed for gaming. And so all of that could subsequently affect the entire performance of how everything runs. So uh, I'm, I don't think I'm, I'll, I'll overclock it. I may overclock it just to see, even though I believe that overclocking doesn't do jack uh, for any of this. I'll just do it anyway, just to kind of see what it happens. But for the most part, I'll tweak it and optimize it just like you guys have seen on PlayStation 2. But again, wanted to make this video review to get you to get the word out because I know many of you are excited. And again, I have that question or not, whether or not PlayStation 3 emulation would possibly work again even if we drop it down to this fully crappy as lowest resolution we ought to be able to get something out of it but again um, i'll put my best foot forward get something out of this but yeah finally we got some good playstation 2 emulation we also have dolphin emulation running at full speed thank god i mean that one was really making me pull my hair out and then now we finally have some playstation 3 so uh, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell uh, for all of my Patreon subscribers and followers. You guys are getting the first dibs and first showcase uh, out of this. You guys have already seen the screenshots or whatnot that we posted earlier today. And hopefully by this weekend, if I have time, you guys will get a nice little showcase out of this. So uh, stay tuned. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.